Hello and welcome to the second part of our SCH Overwrite module. In the first part, I introduced you with the technique of SCH Overwrite. In this part, we will start building our exploit by first fuzzing the vulnerability or rather fuzzing the application for vulnerability. So these are the few software that I am assuming that you as a learner have a basic knowledge of. If you don't, please check out the resources at the end of the video. They will help you in learning further about these software or learning them from scratch. So this is the module structure. We are on the second part that is fuzzing. So before I move forward, I would like to discuss in brief the exploit development process flow with you. So this process starts by identifying the vulnerability in an application. That process is fuzzing, which we'll be doing in this particular part. And once we have identified the vulnerability, we replicate that vulnerability in form of a POC or rather we create a code in form of POC to trigger that vulnerability and replicate the crash in that particular application. And then once we have replicated the crash, we enhance our POC to control the execution. Then we send hex characters to the application to identify bad characters. Then we generate a shell code. We can use either automated tool like Metasploit or you can write your own custom shell code. And then we integrate this shell code in our POC and fire it towards a target software to obtain a shell. So what is fuzzing? Fuzzing is a method for discovering faults in a software by providing it unexpected input and monitoring the software for either crashes or any unwanted behavior. So there are different types of fuzzers. There are mutation based fuzzers and there are generation based fuzzers. In mutation based fuzzers, you specify a sample file to the application or to the fuzzer and then fuzzer uses that file and mutates the contents within that file to fuzz the application. In generation based fuzzers, you specify a sample file to the fuzzer and the fuzzer then generates further sample files using the structure of the first sample file that you specified it. So through fuzzing, we can uh, target various kinds of things. We can target environment variables and arguments. We can target web application servers, even file formats, network protocols, web browsers, and in memory. So in the last module, we did network protocol fuzzing. In this module, we'll be covering file format fuzzing. Our target software is Microsoft Windows XP SP3. I'll be running it as a VM and our target application on Windows is DVD X Player Pro 5.5. So this version of DVD X Player is vulnerable to a PLF playlist containing a long file name and this file name triggers that buffer overflow vulnerability in this application that overrides the SEH. This vulnerability was discovered in 2007 and it was given a rating of 6.8 out of 10 by CVE Mitre initiative. You can check out the link below for more details on the CVE. So let's move to the lab. So as you can see here that I have file fuzz and DVD X player installed on my machine. So the download links for this software are in the description of the first part of this module. So let's create a sample file first. I would my computers see DVD Pro and new file and create a text file and sample dot PLF. Yes. Then I open it with Notepad plus plus and I'll just put two A's here and save it. So this is a source file or a sample file that will be giving to a fuzzer to generate further files. Now I'll open file fuzz here and uh, sorry, I'll specify the target file which is located in my or other source file which is located in my C drive and there and sample PLF and I'll specify the target directory which is my computer C DVD Pro and I think I'll have to make a new folder in it by the same name so this is because uh, there is a bug in file fuzzer if I don't do this it will generate the files in the parent directory of DVD Pro fuzz which is the C directory and we don't want that okay and I'll use the match field and we'll match with two A's and then I'm asking it to generate let's say 100 files and replace two A's with A that is a block of 100 A's per file. So every incremental file will have 100 additional blocks of A in it. Now I'll create these files. 
So two characters read 100 files written to the disk. So here are the files uh, 0 to 99. Great. Now let's fuzz our target. I'll specify the application directory. I'll do this and it is soft and here it is. I'll wrap this directory path in quotes because there are spaces in between program files and the DVD X player 5.5 professional. The argument is zero. So that means we'll be specifying one of the files from this directory. And uh, let's do this in the increment of 10 files. So I'll start with the first file and uh, I'll go to 10. So the milliseconds field specifies the time which the fuzzer will wait before closing the application and launching it again. Now instead of 2000, that is 2 seconds, I'll make it 4 seconds. And uh, I think we are set to go. Yeah, and execute. Later. Nothing. Later. Yeah, so we have a crash here. We have another crash here. So looks like our fuzzing has produced two crashes uh, and this specifies the name of the file that produced the crash that is DVD Pro Fuzz 5.plf. So let's open this file and see how long was a string. Arrange my name. And this is it. Edit. Not part. So these are as you can see here, these are 602 A's that have produced a crash. So looks like we have identified the buffer overflow vulnerability in DVD X player 5.5. In our next part, we'll be using this crash or rather using this information from the fuzzer to create a POC and replicate this crash in the DVD X player 5.5 Pro. So these are the learning resources that you can use to learn more about the software that we are using in this module or the techniques that we are using across all modules of our exploit development basics. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next part. Meanwhile, please subscribe to our channel Yakshas CSC and follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at the rate Yakshas443. And if you need files for this or the previous modules, all you have to do is tweet about one of these modules, mention our Twitter handle and once we receive your tweet, we'll send you the download link in your Twitter DM.